thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for giving up your time this evening. Feels like it's getting exciting. We're getting towards that cricket season that we really hope will will happen, um, and we're going to get a good full season in. Just going to do some news headlines to start. I thought it'd be nice to do some news headlines that didn't feature Piers Morgan or Meghan Markle. Um, so, but unfortunately, it does feature Stripe. So I don't know which is worse, but we'll, crack, we'll go through them anyway. Um, not to labour too much on the first point of participant sign up and launch dates and the programme updates. Most people are up to date with that. But I want to focus heavily on marketing, activator training, Stripe, as we said, the kit. And then the final section tonight will be a Q&A for our development team. Joining us on the call, we should have, well, we've definitely got Sam because I can see Sam. Sam's our wickets development officer from Southampton. and He's going to be monitoring the chat. So if you have any questions throughout, please pop them in the chat box and Sam will feed them into me. We've also got Simon Jones, John Cook, Emily Munro and our director, Ben Thompson, on the call. And they will be answering some questions at the end around general return to cricket. OK, if you could just make sure you've got your microphones muted throughout the presentation, please. And then if you want, want to ask a question, raise your hand or pop the pop the comment in the chat. Right. Thank you all for your questions that you sent in. It was really useful to get the questions in advance. I hope we're going to have. I hope I've answered every question throughout the presentation. So we'll come back to these at the end. But thank you for giving me some pointers on, on where to go with the presentation. The launch dates. I'm sure you all are aware of these now, but they're looming pretty close over, the, over after the weekend. So the 16th of March, an email will go to all previous All Star participants all the way back to 2017. So even if they were eight in 2007, well, if they're eight in 2017, they'll now be too old for Dynamo, so that might be irrelevant. But from the majority of all Dynas uh, all stars from 2017, all stars or Dynamos will be relevant for them. So they will be getting an email direct from the ECB. The club doesn't have to do anything for that. And then on the 22nd of March, general registration opens. The ECB and our marketing campaign will begin, and clubs are able to share their sessions and share their direct links and i'll show you further on how you can get access to your direct links and share that out with your community the main things for clubs to do is to register on club spark and lots of you have already done that but the, the key point at the top there with the red arrow is actually to make sure on club spark that you have registered so there's a few clubs still that haven't clicked the register button even though they have added sessions so just go in and check that. I have been through most clubs and tried to do it on your behalf if, if I've noticed it, but your sessions won't show on the postcode finder if you're not registered. So just check that before we start. Session dates and times added by the 16th of March. On that point, it's not, um, there's a few questions around, is it too late to still upload on, and add sessions or join as a new club? It's definitely not. It's very, the, quick, the process on Club Spark for becoming a new club and adding new sessions is, is pretty quick and can be done any point up until May. It doesn't have to be done by the 16th of March. We're advising clubs to do it by the 16th of March because you get more time for people to sign up to your sessions. But there is no deadline for you adding new sessions. A new thing this year that we've always tried to focus on, but there will be a more of a focus this year, is adding your activators to Club Spark. Previously, we've I say we've advised people to do it, but we haven't really pushed it this year it's really important because they will have to book activator training through club spark they won't be able to book it directly through me as i've done previously before we'll talk about that a bit later and then as mike mentioned before uploading documents first aid insurance and the question that always comes up from clubs is the safe hands document is the yellow safe hand certificate of the club welfare officer and not the individual safeguarding certificate of the club welfare officer or the activator. As Mike said, the club checklist may not appear as 100%, even though you've uploaded those, because it just take it just means that I, I it's my process to go through and verify. I probably won't do that until the week before All Star starts because it's just not worth the time of keep clicking into 80 club accounts to make sure that's there and the insurance certificate doesn't need to be added until you've re, uh, renewed your insurance in April, which is for most clubs. The Lots of questions around first aid across all areas of cricket. 
we will be as soon as we get the go-ahead from the ECB to set up EC uh, first aid courses we'll be setting up as many as we can in as many locations as we can so if you don't have people registered for first aid at the moment doesn't matter you can still set up your sessions the important thing is you have first aid insurance and a safe hand certificate before your first session starts whenever that is in May June July and then finally for clubs it's to verify the strike account and we will come on to that a bit later very briefly some program updates so a bit of a financial change with all stars which you may have seen so it's now 10 pounds back to the club out of the 40 pounds recommended retail price and a five pound kit voucher for every child that signs up so ecb have listened to clubs they've tried to make the financial model more in favor of the clubs 10 pound out of the 40 if you if you wanted to raise your uh, price some clubs have done that then the ECB would take £30 out of every whatever your price is. The £5 kit voucher is to be used in the All Stars and Dynamos online shop, which we'll cover further on. Two delivery windows, so moving away from it just having to be done in May, we can now go May and July. And it's really nice to see clubs thinking about different times and different dates for delivering All Stars. I think lots of clubs noticed last year when we had to do cricket in August that actually it works pretty well. There's more time around the club, more resources more volunteers possibly and my favorite day of the year and lots of i know lots of team and all stars and activators favorite the days of the year the, the money can't buy experiences we really hope we can do that we hope we hope to hold a all stars day around a t20 in hampshire but it's just completely out of our control if we get the go ahead to do it we will do it i promise you um, and the same with england and every all star can sign up for the opportunity to be involved with england teams Dynamo cricket, which is obviously new for this year, is a shift of focus from All Stars away from the learning to play the game, to, well, learning the skills now towards learning to play the actual game. It's and it's been stressed right from the start. This is a complement to your junior cricket. It's not to replace your under eleven offer. It's to complement it with softball cricket. It's eight weeks of match play focused around countdown cricket. We are expecting, and I'm fully expecting a full curriculum from the ECB. Um, they are very stretched having made a lot of redundancies but we are expecting a full curriculum from the ECB for delivery. It will be a skill start, a skill game to start and then into a, get, uh, a match each week. The money can't buy experiences for the for Dynamos are linked to the 100 and Southern Brave and we're obviously really lucky to have all men and women Southern Brave games being played at the Adidas Bowls. Again we hope especially by late July, early August, that we can get some children into the ground and be celebrating those games. And then there's some added extras for children in terms of an app and playing cards that they're going to uh, get when they sign up. Sam, is there any questions come in just yet? Uh, yeah, just around first aid. Um, so I guess um, coaches have, have got their qualifications running out um, and also um, do, they, uh, do the courses need to be ECB or can there be other NGBs or first aid um, providers. Um, is, if, Cookie, are you here? Yep. Good evening. How is everybody? Do you want to take that one? So, in terms of first aid, um, they can be used by other providers. Now, we don't know how other NGBs are operating at the moment. Um, the, the position that we had with all the courses that we deliver face to face is, is that we've taken the unilateral decision not to deliver courses to try and reduce. Um, social interaction. Now there were previous in the in the other lockdown before the roadmap has come out again there were opportunities through education technicalities to perhaps deliver first aid courses continue coach development courses but we're not working on that basis. Um, we're now waiting chapter and verse for ECB guidance that does include and we've been asked to wait with regards to first aid courses at this moment in time. Um, they will not accept online refreshers. Um, forgive me, got a dog in the background there. They won't, they won't take any online refreshers. Uh, they never will moving forward. So we, once we're ready to go, like Rob says, we'll be doing several um, different types of days, events, venues that we can get first aid going, which is a three hour course. So sorry that we can't help any further at this moment in time. The other pragmatic solutions that ECB might come up with 
is that there just needs to be one first aider on site. Um, so that might not necessarily need to be a coach per se, and there's, there's other ways and solutions to do that. Thank you. Thanks, Gricky. Anything else, Sam, at this point? You're muted, Sam. Just have one from Steve. Um, uh, we are only uh, running All Stars. What will the ECB comms of 16th of March say? Um, yeah, okay, so Steve, so that will be, I, I hope that will just say that um, as you've participated in All Stars before, you can now go and find your local All Star Centre. Um, and it will be a case of directing them to the postcode finder. They'll put in their postcode and find the closest centre. So um, I don't think it will be saying that Stratfield Turgis aren't doing dynamos, if you know what I mean. It will just be a, you've done all stars before, fantastic. It's now been launched. We've got a priority window for people who've done it before and go and find your, your nearest centre. I hope that answers that one. Um, and also from Ryan Beck, uh, what, what age limit on activators? So officially, it's 18 um, to be to, to be a, a trained activator. But lots of clubs have used junior activators, and we hope that we can run a course for for junior activators. Definitely um, come along to the activator training as well, um, six sixteen and upwards definitely. And then we hope to be able to run a junior activator course that obviously can help with clubs, cannot be included in the adult to junior ratios, but can definitely be assisting an adult running centres, and that's been used effectively and really well across the, across the county. Okay, moving on with dynamos. And I, this, I just wanted to raise this as an issue because I've noticed a lot of clubs that are doing dynamos and it's fantastic. We've got 32 clubs signed up, which is brilliant, but lots of clubs have chosen to uh, keep their sessions at 60 minutes. Um, and I just wanted to point out that the recommended session length by the ECB is 75 to 90 minutes. And that's just around the fact that we're going to try and fit quite a lot in so it's a skills game to start with of sort of 10-15 minutes and then a game a pairs game of cricket so in 60 minutes that might be quite rushed trying to get everybody every, get it round so if you've got the time and the capacity in your club just to stretch it to 75 to 90 minutes that would be useful that can be changed very very easily on club spark just edits edit sessions or edit program and then you can change it once and it will change it for all eight of your sessions Dynamo's activator may not be the same activator as All-Stars. Lots of cases it will be, but it doesn't have to be. Your The focus is shifting from, to, from being right in the middle of the chaos with All-Stars to just facilitating a match and, and letting the children play, really. So it may not be the same person. It might not be the right thing to put a strain on the person who's doing All-Stars. Um, lots of questions around girls' sessions and really nice to see clubs across the county setting up girls-only sessions. But absolutely perfectly right thing to do for clubs who are looking to start a girls section. Um, Mike and Emma have given up, sent out information to clubs who are keen to do this. I know Catherine on here this evening is interested on do doing this as well. And Mike and Emma are the best people to speak to they can support. But the actual practicalities of setting up a, a girls session is very simple. You just change your, your chosen to objects is from to girls from mixed. It's really key though. So is the ECB uh, view on this has shifted slightly last year. They were very keen for, for clubs to, to run girls only sessions this year. I think they've realized that actually we need to make sure that the opportunities for boys are, are apparent as well. So if you are running a girls section, we will try to make sure a club nearby, nearby you is running a mixed section. So we're not discriminating against anybody trying to, to find a venue to do dynamos. Sam, any questions regarding dynamos before I move on? Uh, well, just go back to Steve's about um, whether, if, if they're running just All-Stars, um, will it be advertised as, as both or will it be just advertised as All-Stars? So that, so that people aren't confused about, what's, um, about what the club is. Yeah, they, so, they won't, so they, won't, um, they, they won't be able to find that you're running. Just, when they go to your site, they'll just see that you're doing All-Stars. Mm -hmm. So it... It will just be an email saying you've done you've done this previously before. Go and search for opportunities that, to do it now. So, um, yeah, it's no issue that a club is just running all stars. Right. Steve, uh, please get in touch with me afterwards if you wanted to go further on that one. Um, other than that, just um, about uh, activated courses. So for for junior activated courses, are, are there, is there anything coming up from the ECB from that? Yeah, well, so we'll just come on to activated training next. Hopefully that will answer it. We'll just do um, 
marketing first. So the, as we mentioned, 16th, well, 22nd of March will be when the main marketing program starts from the ECB and the HCB. I just wanted to point out what we do, what they do and what clubs can really do to, to help themselves as well. So the ECB will do the ma national marketing in the national newspapers. There will be um, adverts on various different websites, family websites for uh, nationally TV as well. So Sky are going to be pushing the uh, Dynamos very, very big because they are a big sponsor of, of the 100 and the BBC as well. So they will be lots and lots of adverts for 100 Dynamos around on Sky and BBC. Not so much for All Stars, but the All Stars will be on family websites, as we said, and in the news. Then what we will do as a cricket board, um, and if Emily is here. Yeah. Hi, Emily. So Emily is our school's engagement manager. And Emily, do you want to just talk about our school activation, which is slowly kicking back into gear? Yeah. So surprisingly, we've been working with schools since September. It's been slightly hampered um, since this lockdown, but we've already worked with kind of 30 plus schools. Um, and obviously we're now ramping back up now that schools went back this week. So um, we're still trying to aim for two kind of schools linked to each club so it's really important that we know that you're definitely going ahead so that we can get that in place obviously because we've lost part of the academic year we are slightly more concentrated so whereas traditionally we would have tried to offer each club a linked school either a six-week program or a taster day we're just going heavy on the taster days now because that's kind of what we've got capacity for but we've still got a really really good spread across um the whole of hampshire we're working with new schools and old schools and those relationships are there and our coaches will tell you that kind of it's even better received than normal because they just love being active again. So we are we are in schools and we are we are out there. So if you've got particular schools that you want us to work with or want to know we're already in, then please just get in touch. And I think all of our focus in the previous years has just been around all stars and key stage one, but now we're stretching it to key stage two for Dynamos. And again, coming back to Steve's point, if you're only doing all stars, then we won't be promoting dynamos in your schools unless there's another club nearby that can. We as And with all school work, we go into the school generically promoting cricket and all-stars and dynamos. We don't go in with a, you must go to this club, all-stars is happening at this club. We give the information and it's up to the parents to go and find their, their nearest and most appropriate centre. Um, thanks, Emily. So we also got a lot of flyers being delivered from the ECB, which I, I don't think is the best thing to be giving out in a COVID world. But um, we might, have, I think schools are asking us to quarantine them, aren't they, Emily, for a few hours? Yeah, so if schools are happy to give um, flyers out, which a lot of them aren't, then we have to take them 72 hours in advance so that they can be quarantined. Just because they're not accepting flyers, though, we have made two, an All Stars and a Dynamo's uh, flyer, which will go into either the school newsletter or kind of the parent mail that goes out and that will we've asked that to go out the week that we are in the school so it's all it's all current and it's kind of in the ch children's kind of memory when they go home and mum and dad says oh what's this you've been doing cricket at school so yeah brilliant thank you rob got a few got a few questions here yes sam um first of all from paddy can you share a direct link so a direct web link to your to your um, all-stars club um before open registration so ECB are asking people not to do that, just so that the final, so sh I would, sh you can share it with people who've been involved before, but then ask them not to share it on. Paddy, I hope that's, that's clear. So we're, they're keen for that priority window to be just a priority window for people who have been involved, but um, definitely from the 22nd. And if you see on my pretty blurry picture there, apologies, on Club Spark in your session details is about halfway down is the direct link. And if you copy and paste that and send it out to people from the 22nd, they can get straight onto to your site rather than going through the postcode postcode finder. Um, anything else, Alan? Uh, yeah, uh, one about uh, DBS process. Uh, what's the easiest process? Yeah, so DBS is cookie again. You, look, you've unmuted perfectly there. Yeah, yeah, happy to. And, and Duncan, just shout if you need any further sort of clarification afterwards. But the the, the DBS approval process at the moment is that um, during the lockdown, obviously to reduce sort of social distancing again or increased social distancing um club welfare officers were were temporarily suspended with their ability to verify the dbs's um so that has come back to us as sort of the primary county users 
So there's about a dozen of us um, that can initiate and verify DBSs on a virtual basis. So very much just like we are now, somebody um, requests a DBS, we send them um, the initiation email, they complete it. There'll then be three um, people that they can select on a geographical basis um, to get their DBS um, completed. That person that has been selected of those three then has up to five days to respond. That then goes back into the person who's completing the DBS's court. They then get in contact with that individual. So say if it was me that was selected, then we find um, an opportunity to catch up over Zoom, Teams, whatever other medium, where we can see each other face to face for about 10 to 15 minutes to cross-reference the um, identification, the three pieces of identification that you use to complete your DBS. We then ask you just prior to that meeting to make sure you email those three copies as well. Um, and that completes the process. That then sends the, the message to Atlantic Data, the company that process on behalf of ECB. And in terms of timescales for completions, it's relatively swift at the moment. So I think sort of five to 10 working days but obviously, the closer and closer we're getting to um, the season, the more and more these sorts of schemes, programs, other types of cricket initiatives are coming together. So just get in contact with us as quickly as you can. Um, we've, we've got clubs that are sending, you know, up to sort of nine or ten individuals with us to, to get their DBSs initiated. All we ask is full name as per passport, title, um, the role that they're going to be taking on at the club, uh, date of birth and email address, and then we can get the ball rolling from there. Brilliant. Thanks, John. Thanks, Cookie. Um, and I've got a couple here from uh, Paddy and, and Will about um, how to find out what schools our coaches are visiting. Emily? Yeah, um, obviously we've got a list. Um, it's probably worth saying that when we go in and promote in a school, we are not club specific. We are just All Stars and Dynamo, especially where there are a cluster of clubs in the area. Because obviously when parents go in, it's where they put their postcode. But yeah, if people want to get in touch, then I'm happy to send the schools um, that we've linked to your clubs. And again, if you've got specifics, if you know the schools that you would want to target, if you send those first, it's easier to go that way. Thanks, Emily. That's, I think that's covered it well. I don't know if you... Yeah, I think that's, I think that's covered it. Thanks, Sam. Um, okay, so yeah, so the, the Easter bunny there is to actually replicate Easter camps that we're running. I couldn't find any any other symbol for Easter, but um, we are we had launched our Easter camps this morning in New Milton, Winchester, Fairham, and Greyshot. Already had sixty kids signed up, which is pretty good for a first day. I think that might be indicative of the interest in cricket this this summer. So it could be it could be the sign of a good things to come. That will be uh, used for promotion for all stars and dynamos and. Um, with the flyers as well and then our shift with most other companies is, is massively towards online marketing so facebook adverts we'll be using and we've used before we'll be stepping up the, the use of those instagram and twitter to to use to get our profile and get your sessions out as far as we can just in terms of what clubs can do on social media um a lot more i would say to put it bluntly um if you have social media accounts now is a good time to dust off the administrators and get them ready and going please share our posts if that as a minimum share our posts because then that gets everything seen by more people but if you can be creating your own posts and sharing them and building up a community of followers in your local community then everything that you do will be much more worthwhile i think you could print thousands of flyers but in this modern world and especially over the last year people are using social media more than ever before so a thousand flyers can take time to print, design, hand out. A Facebook advert can be done very quickly and reach a hell of a lot of people. And I'm happy to talk through clubs how to set up Facebook Facebook adverts. It does it costs a small amount of money compared to flyers as well. You went, mentioned the direct link that you can share from Clubspark, and also there is a full resource hub available from the ECB. Hopefully you've all had access to this. If you haven't, then please jot down that web address. Go on there, create your own login, use it create your own username and password and there is hundreds of posters hundreds of flyers countdowns one week to go three days to go all stars happening here dynamos happening here you can go wherever you like they're all editable so you can print you can put in your club name and session and then either print them out and go and put them up around the town and village or put them on social media and, and share them any any other questions on marketing sam 
Uh, no, not yet. Okay. Uh, actually, well, oh, just just one just now. Um, is there a video uh, from ECB explaining dynamos? Yes, there is. Um, very brief, probably not as detailed as there was for the All Stars, but there is, um, and I'm happy to share that. Um, again, we'll share it on our social media, and I'll, I'll send that out in an email with this when it goes out. Um, but can't can't stress enough the importance of marketing for clubs. Um, John is going to mention at the end a marketing workshop from Club Matters that can really help to develop a marketing strategy. We're going through it ourselves at the board here as well. Activated training. So activated training for both programs is going to, is, is going to be together. It's going to be one, one session. Um, there's the main ECB have done that because there's a similarity between the delivery and the philosophy of All Stars and Dynamos based around fun and engagement and having lots of goes. There is a difference, there'll be a different curriculum and parent engagement is obviously different between All Stars and Dynamos. We don't want parents in the middle of a Dynamos game. We want them to be now, now going and having their drink and standing and observing, but not fully involved in the game as we would with All Stars. Um, and we've done a realization from ECB that they will be activators delivering across All Stars and Dynamos. For new activators, so that'll be from either new clubs or new activators to your club, they're going to be asked to do the e-learning, which has always been a requirement for activators online. And then there will be an online induction, which we will lead as a county. It's been designed by ECB. We will lead and we'll set, set those up, those sessions up about 45 minutes. And then, fingers crossed, there will be a face-to-face -face session, again, delivered by ourselves in a club setting. Existing activators, people who've been involved before, have to do the online le learning, as they always would. Um, and then an online refresher, which will be updated every year, again, around 30 to 45 minutes. And they will have to do those and get to get the ticks on Club Spark to say that they're eligible to deliver the programme. And that leads on to the action at the bottom there. It's really important to add all of your activators to Club Spark. And you can do this via your club checklist. Invite an activ activator, pardon, excuse me, uh, add activator, and then you just need their email and phone number to invite them. They get an email to say, please join our Club Spark account. And they're then set up as an activator. Any questions around? Oh, we've got to, I'll just share the the map. Thought I'd do a road map as it seems to be the the word of the month. Um, so just in terms of how we're going to do it, we were hoping to be able to be launching the online induction and refresher sessions now. Trying to do it while people were still locked in their houses, I thought it'd be a good target audience. But looking unlikely that we can do that, just we haven't had the resources. We only got them yesterday, so we've got to decipher them. Um, but please, now in March, register your activators. Make sure they're ready to uh, book when the booking system comes on. Early April, if not the end of March, we will be doing the online inductions and refresher sessions for existing and new activators. Late April, we hope to receive the updated All-Stars Cricket resources with COVID uh, alterations on it and the new Dynamo's curriculum and then as far as we can go really before uh, all Star starts in May we will do the activated face-to-face -face sessions. The pre previous years we've always got those done nice and early at the start of April but this year we will push them back as far as we can just to see if we can get out to your club and do face-to-face -face sessions. I've had a lot of offers from clubs to say that we can come to them which is great. We'll try to kind of come to an area and get a cluster of clubs together as many people as we can within the COVID guidelines. Sam, it looked like a few questions came in then. Um, Jared Cookie's actually replied to some of them, but um, uh, can existing act activators go, go to the face-to-face -face courses? Yeah, so, it, yeah, definitely. As long as we, um, the, the priority will be getting new activators along. And if, but if we have enough space, I would love to see every activator again. I think it's really a, a good little top up of, Coach, coach development for everybody to come every year and I'm always, I've always stressed that in previous years so if we have space and guidelines allow then definitely existing activators will be invited to come to face to face as well okay thank you so on to the fun bit Stripe the hot topic of the, of the month so just to put a little I've got at the bottom there currently 40 clubs in Hampshire that's gone down to 36 we're ticking them off um, there's currently 1,358 clubs nationally that are not verified. So this is not just a Hampshire problem. It's not just your club. It is a massive problem that's kind of been bubbling away across the winter, but never with any guidance or any 
implications of what it meant, um, which suddenly came into play a couple of weeks ago in the fact that if you're not verified, Stripe isn't going to accept any money. It's all down to a change in financial re regulations worldwide, from what I can understand. I, first of all, just want to say thank you to all the people from loads of clubs who have spent so much time on this. And I share your frustrations massively. And it, if you have managed to get it sorted, then thank you. And if you haven't, I know that you've at least started the process and we fingers crossed we'll get it sorted for you. The main issue that seems to be happening where it's taking a long time is where you're having to change ownership. So you're not sure who set up Stripe back in 2017 or whenever your club started. Seems to be. So Alton and a couple of other clubs have had quick success this week in contacting Stripe, who, is, who are an American company, via the email support at stripe.com. They will then, and you just detail the fact that the change, ownership needs to be changed from don't know or from, who, if you do know, to myself or to the chairman or to the treasurer. Can you please get in touch with them? And then they carry out some, they call you back from America. They carry out some kind of ID verification. Chain, ownership has changed and then the actual process of verification is mildly simple compared to that. Um, there is the on step, the step by step guidance and to actually verify if you follow the guidance step by step, it does talk you through it pretty well. What it doesn't explain is the whole change of ownership thing, but I think we're getting around that now. Most clubs on the call here this evening are sorted. A few aren't and I'm happy to pick up the conversation afterwards, but unfortunately, I can't do anything to help this and neither can the ECB. So it is just a case of contacting Stripe. I'm more than happy to offer guidance and offer support, but I can't physically do anything on the account. So, but please keep me updated. It's interesting to know how clubs are getting on because I don't want to suddenly find out on Tuesday when registration's open that there's lots of clubs that can't, they're not accepting payments. Sam, any, any questions on Stripe? Uh, not on Stripe, but how many hours is the activator course? Face-to-face -face one or the, the say, or virtual? Uh, face-to-face -face -face first. Yeah, face-to-face, -face, uh, two hours. It's normally been three, but I think we'll be doing it in evenings. So a couple of hours. And the fact that you'll have done an online course of 45 minutes before, so we get a lot of the theory out of the way, then I would think two hours maximum. Um, and it will be largely practical. We're just getting you out on the grass, getting you have, have a chance to get to have to play the games, see the, the games being played um, and talk about a few safeguarding things as well. And yeah, so two hours maximum, I think. Perfect. No questions about Stripe. I'm going to move on very quickly. Yeah, no questions. Do I get any questions on it? Okay, Kit. So we mentioned before, £5 for every child to spend in the online store. Um, hopefully, I got an email a couple of days ago to invite me to register for the All-Star Store. I'm not sure if that is just because I'm a county board or that's gone to clubs as well. But maybe if you could just comment in the chat if you have or haven't had an email from, from them. You could just create your own username and then the five pound credit goes into there and can be spent on anything you like from activator kit to participant kit to club kit. So five pound for every participant will come in. New centres, if you're starting this year, then you will receive the full big kit, the full big kit bag. Um, club, I haven't been told. I think the fact that they're offering five pound per child means they're not going to be issuing top up kits to clubs when they reach sort of 20 kids, 40 kids, as they have done before. I will try and find that out. Parents, when they sign up, have the option of saying, we don't want any kit if you've done it before and the people are very plastic conscious these days. If you don't want all of the kit, they can say no. It's not a reduction in price, but they can say no to the kit. And also returning children this year are not getting a bat. So they're taking the bat out of it. So um, again, that's another reason why they can give clubs 10 pounds because it doesn't cost quite as much for the ECB. So, but clubs, clubs will have bats. Clubs have got plenty of, from my journey around the county, there's all stars bats absolutely everywhere. Just as much as there are face masks being chucked into the ditches, you see as many around the county. So hopefully there's enough bats. If not, then the, the five pounds can be used to, to top up on bats as well. Sam, any response? Have people had those emails or not? Has there been any response to that? Uh, no emails sent out to clubs, apparently. OK, so they'll, um, they'll be coming soon. I guess they'll be coming after you've had some people sign up. That'll probably make sense. Dynamos kit. So if you obviously all clubs that are doing dynamos will be new this year and you get the, the shiny new kit bag. That's enough to, I, I think, for 24 children. Again, I probably need to confirm that, but it's enough to, to set up two games of six aside cricket from what I can understand. Tape measure to mark the pitches, cones, 
ropes to mark the boundaries, flags to look pretty, and stumps and, and balls. And the bats are wooden. They're not full willow that adults would use, but they are they're wooden. So it's a step up. It's a graduation from All Stars. Activators receive, receive the New Balance t-shirt as well. Uh, when will we get the kit, Rob? The kit will, um, well, good question. So last year's kit was in a, was one of the first shipping loads to be quarantined, I think. So it was coming from China just as COVID was kicking off. So hopefully that stuff has been found and washed um, and arrived. So if that's here, then it normally, it, it'll be before your first session. I can't guarantee when that happens though. So the earlier your sessions are set up, people have start if it's anything like last year for all for all stars they, they don't send kit out until you've had 10 signups i would imagine dynamos will be the same so they'll probably wait until you have 12 to two times six before they send out any kit as most clubs some clubs know we get kit as a county board and we have stepped in to give clubs kit if they haven't reached um those cut those points or they haven't got kit for their first session i've driven across the county many a times handing out all stars kits so they've got stuff ready so don't worry if you don't get your kit we will sort it out and we'll get it ready that's the end of the all stars and dynamos presentation i just want to go back to all these questions that we had at the start so can we buy extra kit yes you can will there be a maximum number per group that's what we're going to come on to in a minute we we, we don't know but we've got some kind of early indications it's not too late to sign up as a center anytime you can do that First aid doesn't need to be sorted until your first session, but we'll get those sessions set up as, as quick as we can. Videos, there, yes, there will be. They'll be with the curriculum, we hope. Uh, I think they've managed to film these actually before COVID started last year. So they went out to South Africa, I think, and filmed lots of videos of, of the games and the warm-ups and the drills. Online resources in terms of parents' confidence, that will come in the activator trainings. And um, I know there's lots of clubs on the call this evening who've had real good success in getting parents involved. So if anyone wants to pop that in the chat and happy to talk about it over the next sort of five minutes, then please do. Um, setting up a girls dynamo session. What training do I need? So normal, the normal training will be the same as an activated training. Where and when can you start? Um, whenever the club is ready to. And contact, I would just say to contact Mike Pollard and Emma Cowdrill the county board because they, they've got a full support program in place for, for clubs wanting to start dynamos as girls and a girls section oh just smashed my mouse that's good um and i can't read the last ones pub what publicity is available for clubs to use so that's the resource hub um plus sharing all of our social media posts and looking out for the national posts as well and the marketing resources on the hub as well. And then how and where will Dynamos be promoted to reach children not involved in club cricket? And that will be Dynamos, especially that'll be from the Sky and BBC uh, marketing campaign, which won't just be on Sky Sports, but will be across all Sky programmes. And the BBC, again, it's going to be prime time on the BBC. So it will, it will reach those families who are, are not necessarily into cricket at the moment. Any more questions on All Stars and Dynamo, Sam, before I move on? Uh, got some got some questions, yeah. So um, on COVID guidance, so what can we what can we expect for like a May May delivery of the All, All Stars? Um, and do we know when we're going to get that guidance? No, we're going to so we'll come on to that in just a second. Um, yeah, that's we will tell you as much as we can in a second um, from from Ben and Simon. Any any more All Stars Dynamo before I move on, Sam? Uh, yeah, about a, ta a taster week or a taster session before. Um, is that okay to go ahead and do that? Yeah, definitely. So clubs have done it really well, sort of kind of a week zero, especially for the youngsters and for the parents if they've never been to your club before, then invite them along and say, this is where this is where to park, this is where the toilets are. And especially in the COVID world where you're going to have to be socially distancing and everything, might, it might be a one-way system around the club. I would recommend it. Um, again, as long as it meets COVID, whatever the COVID guidelines are, then I would definitely encourage, and you've got resources to do it, I would encourage clubs to do that. It's a really nice thing to do it's and appreciated by parents. Okay. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so anyway, keep the questions coming if you've got them and we can wrap up at the end. Um, just want to talk a little bit. We had some, also some questions around COVID guidelines. Uh, ben, are you... I am. Thanks, Rob. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, 
Um, I feel like I've had a bit of a build up to that, but I, I think it might disappoint a few people. But um, I wasn't intended to take too much of, of an, anybody's time this evening on this. Um, but as Rob's mentioned there, and as we've got in the chat box, there are obviously a couple of questions. So we at least wanted to, to touch on it. But um, I think it's fair to say it, at this point, we're unable to answer these questions um, specifically because we simply just don't have um, the ECD guidance at the moment. But what we did want to give you um, this evening is just a couple of dates as to when you can expect um, some some further guidance. So um, at least it, it, it's something at least and hopefully will allow you to, to factor in um, this into, into your planning to, to, to some degree, as, a, as I say. Um, so um, I'm sure you're all aware that as of the 29th, um, cricket can resume for both junior, juniors and adults. And in preparation to that, um, ECB are putting their guidance together um, and that will be issued shortly after um, a, a government or a department of culture media, uh, media and sport announcement on the 22nd of March. So we don't know precisely when the ECB guidance will follow, but we do expect it to be um, a couple of days after. So it'll be um, the ECB, like everybody else, will, will, will hear that guidance. Um, and then they've got a couple of days really to, to um, digest that and make any tweaks to the guidance that, um, that they've got. So as I say, anticipating that to be shortly after, after the 22nd. So please keep um, uh, an eye out for that. That will, come, that will be coming di directly um, to, to everybody. Um, what we do know at this time, or, or, or what we've been led to believe by the ECB, is that the playing guidance specifically will be, will be very similar or largely the same as 2020. Can't guarantee it, but that's, that's the current thinking. Um, so that, I think you'll all agree, is, is quite good, good news. Um, players, coaches, um, and parents don't have to, we hope will not have to um, get used to a whole heap of um, uh, other restrictions and, and, and playing guidance. So we're, we're expecting it to be large, largely the same. Um, what we do know, or what we know ECB are waiting on from government is a bit more um, uh, guidance on exactly what will be permitted in, in relation to travel and also hospitality guidance. So um, we hope and expect that to be included in the, in, in the guidance um, following the 22nd. Uh, in advance of the 22nd, what ECB will be sending out, however, um, is some infographics directly in relation to, to the playing guidance. guidance. So for those that can remember the guidance that was sent out um, last year, it was quite bulky. So we're, we're, we're pleased to hear that there, there'll be further infographics that, um, that'll be sent out that'll be more easy to digest. And it's really aimed at driving up compliance um, of the, of the um, guidance amongst players and um, coaches um, in addition to, to, to last year. So um, we expect that, um, or we, we're expecting to receive that in the next couple of days. So that will be sent direct to clubs and leagues hopefully by the um, start, of, start of next week. So, so please keep an eye out for that. Um, so that, that really is the, the update on that. It's, it's more letting you know that it, guidance is on its way, but um, ECB a little bit restricted as when they can send that out um, based on, on this government, uh, government announcement on the t on 22nd. Um, but in terms of the questions, please keep them coming in. ECB is... Um, encouraging us to collate and answer those questions where we can. Where we can't, then they're encouraging us to escalate them up to them um, and then form um, part of a, an, an FAQ. And also it's quite useful for them to make representation to, to the, the various government departments um, where necessary as well. So, so please keep them coming. Um, they, are, they are really useful and we, we do pass them up. So um, Rob, really back over to, 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 to you um, at this point. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, difficult job there, giving no news as well, really. <laughs> well Thank yeah, you. I, I think we're reluctant just to go into any of the detail, yeah. whilst, we, whilst we know, obviously, or playing guidance-wise, we think it's going to be largely the same. What we don't want to do is, is give out information that then goes and changes um, a week down the line. So it's a bit of a tricky, tricky position to be in. But just, I think we all just need to be a little bit 
um, patient for a little bit longer, sorry. Um, and hopefully we will have all that information very, very shortly. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Thank you. Um, just so just referring to the questions we had specifically, so maximum numbers for training and COVID rules. We don't know. All, what we do know at the moment is one-to-one -one coaching is still not allowed, and that is the case until at least 29th of March. Um, Mike's asked a question on, on the chat there about um, are other clubs reducing numbers based on anticipated social distancing requirements? So I've had conversations with quite a few clubs about the fact that they wanted to be able to cap their numbers as at a number, but no, no clubs have actually talk to me anyway about um, reducing them as yet. I think they were all waiting to find out the guidance, Mike. I know um, you asked there, early guidance will be appreciated. And I can assure you as soon as we know, we'll get it out to, to you as well. So I mm -hmm. um, hope that kind of answers that. And it, it still feels like we haven't got much time, but if that guidance does come out before the 29th of March, it's still a good six weeks. Well, yeah, six weeks until all starts start. So there is still time to make adjustments on the back of that guidance. And then just finally regarding the groundwork. Um, so group groundwork is still not allowed. So it's, it's still one person doing the work. Um, and that, that's the case until until the 29th of March. And if all the people who are interested in grounds, we did a great webinar yesterday with uh, expert grounds panel, which is on YouTube, if you wanted to go and look at that as well. And we'll be sending that out to clubs tomorrow. Uh, Simon. Good evening, everyone. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Ben. Um, yes, uh, funding updates. Just a couple to um, share. Um, the ECB Return to Cricket Grant Scheme closes on the 15th of March, which is next Monday. Um, there is a link um, to the web pages to do with the grant scheme. But if you don't have an application form that because um, um, it's not an app, you obtain application forms from us at the county board. If you haven't got my previous several emails sent over the summer, give me a shout and contact me direct and I can get you an application form. Be very keen for clubs to um, uh, um, apply who haven't as yet. And the thrust is basically to look to recover um, any unavoidable costs from the previous uh, 12 months where you said where you have a shortfall and that is up to £3,000 per club. Um, I think we've had about 70 applications um, totaling about £170,000, £180,000 into the game. So, um, so many clubs have taken advantage of that. Um, but like many things, I'm possibly expecting a bit of a late surge um, on that one. Um, just to let you know that once that emergency funding is switched off, um, we will be back in touch with a webinar with you um, on the new ECB County Grant Scheme. Um, so, uh, and that will be accompanied by a new set of technical guidance called Welcoming Environments. The ECB is updating its technical guidance probably um, after about some of the existing guidance is about 10 to 11 years old. Um, so expect that to come out. We haven't had any information about criteria yet. I think my uh, Ben and I's training session is next Monday. Um, I think so. We'll be we'll um, we'll be on that, and we'll 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 come out to you separately with that. So that's the the funding side. Um, just also wanted to mention the um, the local authority and government funding. Initially, you know, about sixty clubs in the area. Um, uh, uh, were eligible and claimed the government small business £10,000 grants um, across the county. Um, and subsequent to that, for businesses with a rateable value, um, then there has been further, further um, support available. That support in its current form, known as the Local Restriction Support Grant, is closing at the end of the month. Um, all the local authority contact points are at the link in the presentation, which will be coming out to you afterwards, kindly supplied to us by, um, um, supplied by Business Hampshire. Um, so um, again, there have been some follow-up grants for premises which have had to close or been unable to operate, but and local authorities, to be fair to them, most of them have been pretty proactive in actually even in some cases calling clubs and saying, why haven't you applied for this money? Uh, and um, but I think what you want to do is maybe contact the local authorities um, to see um, if you're eligible. And the news as well that I've received from, um, uh, I think Portsmouth City Council's business newsletter, but it's a national scheme, 
is that once that closes, there will be new options detailed there um, to support the leisure and hospitality uh, industry and other non-essential retailers, um, the additional restrictions grant um, and the uh, restart grant. So keep a look out from them from the beginning um, of, of April. Um, that's about it on the funding side. Are there, are there any questions, Rob? Uh, Jonah, yeah, one um, from Will. Can, it, uh, can the grant scheme cover insurance and, uh, any, and other, it, other club costs? Absolutely. Uh, any expe expenditure um, over the previous um, 12 months. It, it, Will, is your club sway? It is. And I it spoke is. Yeah, they have. And, and, and they, he, they have yeah. applied and been successful. <laughs> yes, but, but but I spoke to him and he said we've got to spend it on new spending in the next month. He didn't realise that we could it, claim it, it against previous spending. It was retrospective. I think possibly we can c catch up with it afterwards. I think you may have had your go at it now. Oh, <laughs> right. Okay. okay. So, uh, so we, we uh, were having a catch up last week about it. Okay. Perfect. Right. Yeah. And right. I think that point about. Um, time pressure of spending. ECB have really been reasonably informal about this. So I've got back to your club chair, Chris, and said that won't be that won't be an issue. So um so so go ahead, you've got the grind. We've tried well to, to work out what we can spend it on. No, okay. uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Some uh, you you've been spending it on some of those things that you claim for that were unavoidable expenses over the last 12 months. So I think that's the answer, isn't it? Excellent. Good. Um any any more questions, Sam? Uh, yeah, from Kieran, we are um, saying they've lost the grass cutting contract um, contractor during COVID. Uh, can they purchase a new one with the with the grant scheme? Right, this this grant scheme isn't specifically for capital new capital purchases. It is to cover various aspects, which might be expenditure over the previous twelve months. It can also cover, though, um, COVID contingency arrangements. At first sight, the fact that you're going to have to do something now because um, during the period you lost a contractor may be eligible. So um, contact me um, afterwards um, on that one, simon.jones at agsbowl.com. Uh, I'm happy to chat that one through. Any more, Mossy? Uh, just asking Rob to, um, are the slides going to be available after? Yep, so slides will be available and this, the recording will also be on, on our YouTube as well. So that will go out tomorrow. Um, great. Thank you, Simon. Always informative. Um, John, Cookie, you're going to take us home uh, with some information about workshops for clubs. Yep. Thank you very much, Rob. Um, so we were very, very lucky at recent times to engage, I think probably several years ago with Club Matters, um, with a, a number of different workshops uh, that we ran face to face. I think the last one we did actually face to face was legal structures. Um, and now we're in a position over the period between sort of next week, um, all the way up until the end of April to be delivering the following um, six uh, Club Matters workshops there. Now, the important thing with this, um, and I know that there's some, some names on here that, that have registered, so thank you very much for doing so, is that we do need a minimum of eight clubs um, for any workshop to actually take place. Um, we can have up to 14 clubs there, but it's a minimum of eight clubs. So developing a marketing strategy, which is taking place on the 18th of this month, currently has six people registered for it. Um, so hopefully with the way that Rob was talking about um, other initiatives such as Dynamos, All Stars, um, as much as there's some brilliant resources there, um, some fabulous assets, how you get that out to market, so to speak, this could be a perfect opportunity to spend two hours with us um, and the experts that are, are brought in basically from Sport England to do this. Um, the others are going pretty well, engaging your community. Um, I think we're all already there pretty much, which is great news. And, and we're getting closer and closer to, to not getting the, the complement that we require for the other ones. Um, we have sent out details via secretaries. We've gone out to junior coordinators recently, and, and also we've got a, a small social media campaign for that. So we'll give it probably until Monday next week, just to check the numbers. 
Uh, and apart from that, what we will do is we'll speak to our neighbouring counties to offer them the opportunity, which, which won't be the worst thing in the world because there's a chance then for um, you to hear how things are going probably on other sides of other borders, basically. Below that, we have, uh, and we started last night, I think we've had a couple of people that attended um, a fantastic session um, from Mark Boynes from Opening Up Cricket, um, touching on uh, mental health and well-being, um, but through very much the lens of cricket. So, you know, stepping on there myself as, as much as several others did, I'm sure it did wonders for them thinking about scoring more runs, taking more wickets and, and having outstanding moments in the field. So it was really, really good. It was quite moving at some stages. Mark shared his own personal story. Um, and what we can do with that, we've got about 40 people registered currently. We'd love to get it up to 100 people. And Mark has kindly recorded the first session. So if you can book on again, um, or you want to tell somebody else about it, get them to register, we can also keep you up to speed by giving you that first um, session uh, as a recorded session. And then that means that you won't be missing out on what comes up uh, the next two Wednesdays in advance. So hopefully that's given you some choices, whether it be from club development or your own personal development to, to have a few options uh, pre-season. Thanks, John. I highly recommend the opening up sessions attended last night and lots of thinking again, relate it back to cricketing performance. So if you can get to, get onto those the next two Wednesdays, please do. Thank you, everybody. That's it officially for this evening. Just, just finished just in time. Um, thank you all for attending. Please get in touch with myself on the email address there if any other questions, but also any other members of the team. I'm happy to stay on. We'll stop, stop the recording now, but I'm happy to stay on for 10 minutes um, if you've got any questions that followed up. If not, thank you for joining us. We're getting close to the season. Thank you for all the hard work you've put in. Um, and I hope to be getting out and joining you at your cricket ground at some point this summer. Thank you.